All right, whenever you're ready. All right, so good afternoon, um, fellow peers, um, uh, staff, and invited guests. Um, our focus of our presentation and our analysis will be on the Chernobyl disaster of um, 1986. <coughs> so the Chernobyl disaster took place on the 26th of April 1986 in Pripyat, Ukraine, when Ukraine was still part of the Soviet Union. Um, it is the worst nuclear disaster ever in history, and more than 300,000 people were displaced due to the event. Um, in the first days of um, the disaster, 38 people were um, died due to radiation poisoning. However, um, further years down the line, due to cancer, many more people died. Um, the radiation cloud that was created due to the explosion spread as far as Spain and Norway. However, 60% of the fallout was in Belarus, 30% um, of it was in Ukraine, and the other 10% was what affected Russia and the rest of Europe. Um, due to the explosion and the following years, the Chernobyl exclusion zone was created. Um, basically, with the Chernobyl exclusion zone, I'll show a picture of it after this. Um, it was basically an area created um, that restricted people from entering specific areas that were affected by high levels of radiation. Um, we actually, still today, people are being affected. Um, people are still being affected. And um, there was actually an interesting recent study done by NASA in the past couple of weeks by um, their Van Allen probes that noticed that um, communication between the ground and satellites um, above um, orbiting in space is actually being altered and slowed down. Um, they found that it's actually because of a man-made barrier of radiation that is stemmed from events like Chernobyl and um, uh, Nagasaki and stuff like that. Um, so, the, so the two maps that we analyze are um, these two. So the, um, the map on the left is shows um, a regional scale of Europe, and it shows um, MS, the amount of MSV or um, ionizing units of ionizing radiation that has affected um, places as far as the UK. Um, so these places on this side, um, further away from the explosion, were, are, are really affected. However, um, places um, in Ukraine and Belarus are still affected today. Um, the more you go to the right, like these um, places in the Ukraine, are the most heavily affected and still have high um, radiation in them. So now I move on to like, the, um, the map on the right, which is the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which I was talking about. So the Chernobyl exclusion zone was um, created after the accident, and basically what it is is these um, very red um, parts, like next to the Chernobyl plant and some places in Belarus, are confiscated and closed, confiscated and closed zones, meaning nobody can enter these areas. These areas are controlled, and only people with um, hazmat suits are allowed to enter. Um, the second one is the permanent control zone, which is a little bit um, darker shade of red or lighter shade of red. Um, basically, these zones are permanently controlled and monitored by Ukrainian officials. And people are allowed to enter, but only for a limited period of time, or they will um, obtain radi radiation poison. Um, the periodic control zones are only um, controlled when there is any some sort of high tourism in the area. And unnamed zones are just other zones which are being affected, but are not named by um, were not named by the Soviets when it happened, and therefore are not um, being patrolled. So the data collected to commence the algebra aspect of this project. Our first step was to collect information and data. In this project, we used the data table conducted by the IPPNW, which is the German affiliate of International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War. Um, this data table measured in percentage deals with the health effects on the Chernobyl 10 years after the reactor explosion. As you can see, the chart centers on the years 1987 to 1996 with the inclusion of different experimental variables. Um, these affected victims fall under the category categories liquidators, evacuees, inhabitants, inhabitants in affected areas, children of affected parents. Um, before I move on to regression analysis, I will clarify what all these categories entitle. Liquidators are a combination of civil and military personnel called upon by the government to deal with the aftermath of the Chernobyl incident. Their task was to clean off the breeze near the reactor, the construction of the sarcophagus, decontamination in contaminated areas, road building, and destruction of highly contaminated infrastructure as well as fauna. Any information of danger due to the contamination, the liquidators have to suppress and liquidate, hence the name. Evacuees are the 116,000 Chernobyl inhabitants living around the, living around the plant who were forced to leave. In addition, to, there was an extra of 220,000 people forced to leave the contaminated death zone 
due to the expansion of the radiation, who can also be classified as evacuees. Inhabitants affected in the area are workers or citizens who are located near the reactor number four of Chernobyl at the instant of the disastrous event. Subsequently, they receive extreme doses from external gamma radiation. Not only, not only did this event lead to the death of 62 individuals or enumerated victims over time, it also caused disabilities, diseases, and other health conditions that threaten the conditions of not only themselves but the future generations. Children of the affected parents um, include a new generation that upholds quite peculiar changes in their body since there has been changed due to the since there has been changed due to radiation po poisoning in their genes. Um, regression analysis. Our main focus was the analyzing of the category liquidators. Um, we used linear, cubic, quadratic, and exponential regressions to find the equation that best matched the graph. Um, then we chose a line of best fit by identifying the correlation coefficient, R. Uh, this correlation coefficient serves as a measurement of accuracy for lines of best fit. We then examined and determined that the lines that best fits our data plot is the cubic function. Um, so as we just said, the best line was, to quote, um, was the cubic function. We just extended the graph a bit so you can see how the model relates to the future. Um, so the best correlated coefficient was the cubic function. Um, there was just a limitation created with this graph. Because if you try to um, take an inference of what's going to happen in the future, um, this graph shows that the health went up at a drastic rate. However, we know that medicine after 1996 was, became better. However, it was um, not at this drastic rate. For the regression analysis, our main uh, focus was on the liquidator group. However, here are the best models that fit the rest of our data. And yes, they are all cubic functions. Red curve represents the Eva Creek group. Black curve relates to the inhabitants of the affected areas. The purple represents the children of the affected parents. Okay. For our limitations and conclusion, these were uh, these uh, four limitations. The future estimates by most of the models do not make sense, therefore they're inaccurate. The group struggled to find data points past 1996, so we limited um, to 10 data points because the uh, IPPNW did not report after 1996. At this, uh, this time, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. This means that it was a Soviet facility, and a lot of the information was not able to be acquired because it was in Russian. Also, a lot of the Soviet data was kept private, so it limited our research. All reports that we found were done by other countries or were found after the Soviet Union collapsed. For example, in this uh, presentation, it was a German corporation. In our conclusion, we were able to find models that represented our event in history. Even with the limitations we had, we could observe uh, how health deteriorated over time. So